Hey YouTube, it's Dan. Hopefully you guys remember who I am. I don't really cube much anymore since starting college, um, but I have taken an interest in artificial intelligence and chess and stuff like that. And in spite of recent events where Google's AlphaGo beat Lee Sedol in a uh, Go match, which is a huge jump forward in artificial intelligence, uh, I got the motivation to write a chess engine, a chess AI basically. And today on the leechess.org analysis board, I will be going over that game. And you can see here that this move that it's requesting with the blue arrow, that's the Stockfish engine, which a lot of times is considered the best chess AI out there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how its uh, suggestions match up with mine. Uh, just as a quick heads up, these moves are not very high quality. This is the first AI I've ever written and the first game it ever generated. Uh, I was partially expecting to just see random moves, but with the end result of the game, I was actually pretty happy with how it went. It overall exceeded my expectations. So yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to go through it. The first move it played was knight c3. This is a move I was happy to see. It's, it's not the most popular move at high level play. Knight f3 is a lot more popular, um, but the nuances there aren't... It's, it's more like you want to use your c-pawn to control the center, where your f-pawn a lot of times will be used for king safety after you castle short very small difference so this move isn't very popular but it's fine and i was happy to see it knight c6 as a response white lashes out with d4 and i was a little bit worried that the game might get very symmetrical and boring but luckily that didn't happen black plays knight f6 and white plays bishop g5 so at this point it hit me that these aren't random moves this game might actually have some degree of intelligence which was cool because i had written everything from scratch and with that being said, the next move kind of was a little bit disappointing. Black plays knight g4, which isn't a great move. Uh, this piece can easily be kicked away. It's not very stable on this square. But with that being said, I was happy to see um, white's response, e4, um, controlling the center and opening up an attack on the knight. And at this point, I was wondering where this knight was going to go. And I was happy to see black's response of d6, which is the engine suggestion, uh, defending the knight and saying, hey, it might not be the most stable piece in the world on this square, but I'm going to at least defend it while it's there, which I was happy to see that neither side was just willing to give up material. Um, so in this position, white plays d5, kicking the knight, and Stockfish's suggestion is played here, knight e5, and white lashes out with f4. So this next move sort of really set the tone for this game. Um, it would be easy to play something like knight g6, like Stockfish suggests, but instead um, a pretty aggressive move was played by black. And this move doesn't really work, but it certainly made the game a lot more exciting. Uh, knight e3 was played, saying that this knight is under attack, but I'm going to counterattack with the queen. And of course, something like Queen e2 could probably be played, and both these knights would be under attack. And this probably doesn't work out too well for black, but luckily white played an equally aggressive and equally bad move um, with <laughs> bishop b5 check, saying if you're going to attack my queen, I'm going to attack your king. But black played the reasonable move of just f6, and now there's this issue where this bishop is being attacked and this queen is being attacked. and White can't really deal with both of those threats. So the bishop had to be sacrificed here. And then after the recapture, the queen is moved. So black chases the queen around a little bit here with some good moves. And then once the queen finally finds a safe square, black just retreats the knight. And although their attack didn't really work, they actually got away with it. And black is up a piece here. So white kicks the knight away, black responds. White develops its final minor piece to f3. Black attacks the bishop with f6. And just with the tone of the game, white responds f5, counterattacking instead of defending the piece. And here, black made a couple mistakes that really sort of um, lost the game, essentially. And you'll see here that we do see an exchange and it would be very tempting to just recapture this pawn but you'll see stockfish finds that that's a massive mistake 
black does recapture and the evaluation of position goes to plus three for white. You can see white is down a piece, but Stockfish thinks that the attack going on on the F file is so strong that um, white is actually much better here. So white captures the pawn and Stockfish is suggesting something like a bishop sacrifice, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, black decides to bail out with the king and white lands this nice fork on the queen and the rook. Black moves the queen and gives the rook. So white is up in exchange here and is now doing significantly better than black. Black develops the bishop. White captures the pawn. And here, this bishop is kind of trapped. Uh, it can't get out either avenue. And it's being attacked twice. So black makes an attempt to try and escape, but it doesn't really work. The bishop is captured and the rook can't recapture because the knight's defended. So the king moves, we see this pawn is taken, queen moves, and then the next move was pretty interesting. White plays rook d1, which is a very far looking move. Um, if a human played this move, you would think they have plans to sort of open up the central pawns, but I, I know how I wrote the AI and I know that it can't be possibly thinking that far. But as you'll see, this move actually turns, uh, turns out to come in handy. Black plays a kind of desperate move, lashing out with this pawn. Black is kind of locked up here, not a whole lot that can be done. And then this move took me by surprise. B4, just giving a pawn and trying to open up these pawns toward the Black King. Amazing, because I, I know the AI that I wrote is very greedy, it's very materialistic, and I was shocked to see it play a move like this. Black took the pawn, and white jumped the knight right in. Another desperate move, but black doesn't really have a lot that can be done here. The king is sort of stuck in the center. White jumps the knight in. Black moves the rook, who's being attacked. And then e5. So this is where I knew that white was really thinking ahead here because once again, just giving away a pawn and trying to open up this rook file toward the black king. Black takes the pawn and then d6. And at this point, black is really in some trouble here. How is it gonna stop this pawn? and it suggests some crazy queen moves. It, it, I, I even saw so, uh, Stockfish suggested queen takes on e6 as a desperation move, but there's not a whole lot that black can do here. Black actually responds with g3, and if I were playing white here, I probably would just ignore this and capture here, because after black takes uh, the queen, the king takes, I mean, black can't really deal with these threats. The rook is coming in, trying to deliver checkmate. This pawn's gonna promote. But white just played it cool and took the pawn. And from here, black is, uh, black's king is, uh, sorry, black's queen is under attack and moves it, trying to blockade this pawn. But keep in mind, this pawn capture opened up this rook file and white played rook h8, forcing black to give up the queen. There's no other move here. And that does occur. And there is a forced checkmate here. Um, white doesn't see it. Unfortunately, the AI is a little bit materialistic. So I was a little disappointed to see rook takes rook, but it's fine, it's not a bad move. It's just not necessarily the best move. Black tries to bail out with the king. White puts a stop to that using the defense of the knight. The king goes back and white delivers checkmate. And that's game. <laughs> So overall, the quality of the moves wasn't great, but the result is definitely a whole lot more exciting than I thought it would be. Part of me was expecting to see random moves and part of me was expecting it to just not work at all. So overall, I was happy to see a very aggressive game and I'm definitely gonna continue working on this engine in the future to try and improve it and get it to be as accurate as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.